G'day everyone and welcome to the Penrite Preview as we look ahead to the Gold Coast. We're here at the Penrite Racing Garage where it's been uh, pretty hectic, I think we can say, since Bathurst. Lee Holdsworth, Dave Reynolds are here once again. Boys, how are you? Good. 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 Thanks, Stubbsy. How are you going? I'm real cold. Well. I'm real well. How I'm have you? Freezing. <laughs> you feel the cold, mate. How, up, how have you? I got recovered? up this morning. Went for a run at like it was five degrees this morning. It was just freezing, but the sun was out. It's a beautiful day, and I just haven't warmed up since. <laughs> well, mate, get set. Get set. Right? Are you ready? Are you good? Well, the Gold Coast is up, so like okay. you know. There's no point spending heaps of time in the cold weather, I don't think. No. Let's look back before we go forward. How do you look back at Bathurst? How have you recovered? Say that again. Just let's look back before we go forward. Yeah. Okay. How have you recovered Sorry, from... Sorry, it just took me a bit to <laughs> Do you want me to talk a bit, a bit slow slower? This morning. <laughs> um, Lee, we'll start with you then. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought Bathurst was a very taxing weekend, physically and mentally. Uh, we had a lot of media in the lead up. Um, you know, changing conditions all the time. And then the race, for some reason, it was like one of the hardest races I've ever done there, just for it's a lot hard, of reasons. It's hard when you qualify on the front row, isn't it? It's just so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, look, there were some good parts. There were definitely good parts to it. But yeah, I just thought um, the track was just, it was very difficult. It was slow. It didn't have any grip. Um, it was easy to make a mistake. But we kept our heads, um, yeah, we, we had the front row start, which was great. Um, there were some really good positives from the weekend. Came home six, not where we wanted to finish, but we kept out of trouble and we brought home a straight car. Um, a lot different to, to Dave's weekend. Which, yes, uh, a lot different. Yeah, my weekend was actually looking okay. In practice, we were always, if it was myself or Matt, we were always in the top five. Um, at the end of every session, except for qualifying, something went wrong and we just didn't, make the most of it and we end up 18th and that kind of set us up for a bit of a, a shit run yeah because you know if you qualify on the front row there's there's not a lot of people to crash into in front of you but when you're 18th you know there's plenty of people to crash into and at about lap five um yeah matt got caught in caught in a crash that was you know nothing to do with him he was just a just a bystander and yeah it's you know it destroyed the car put us out of the race at lap five and I haven't had that sort of feeling since I very first started in 2007 when we're out on the warm-up lap. So, yeah, it's a, it's a terrible feeling and it's shit to watch. It's the toughest thing when you go through the whole week. Yep, it is. The yeah, whole true. lead up, yep. you do everything right. Everything. And then your day finishes yep. before he even gets in the car. And um, it's just this big anti-climax because we, you know, the whole week you're, you're aiming for Sunday, obviously. Yep. And then it finishes and it just leaves you with a completely empty feeling. And Matty Camp, he was doing well, wasn't he? he? Was. Like he's, yeah, Matt he was, was really good. Yeah, yeah. He was you know. super fast in the wet and in the dry at all conditions. Um, and yeah, there was a there was a crash on lap one he avoided, which yeah. probably, if I was in the car, I would have involved myself with it probably. <laughs> so I'm glad he was in the car uh, to get around it. And then, yeah, this, that was an unfortunate thing. There's been a lot said about the incident. Yeah, there was, yeah, heaps, heaps there was to talk some about. fairly heated comments made about Zane, especially initially. What, what's your take on it now that everyone's had a chance to, to um, pull down? Yeah, people were sort of have, having a crack at him for passing that car, but I'm like, yeah, of course, you're allowed to pass any car you want. He, he obviously, he didn't, he misjudged it and, you know, ran off the track. But what he did next, that was sort of, that was the more harshly criticised part. You know, when you go off the track, you you kind of have to get your car under control. And when you go off of the track and it's all mud and wet, you kind of have to slow right down where he kind of, he kind of sped up. And um, when, when he, when he re-entered the track, he was all, he was out of control. So that's what caused the big pile up, uh, which didn't look good for him. But, you know, I think looking forward, you know, they have to sort of do something a bit different with that corner. Cause that's, you know, over the past couple of years, that's been a, a problem area. So, you know, if they actually think about it logically and, and you know, maybe re reseal or re retar some of the areas where it's grass. So when you come back on the track, you you got a bit more chance to get your car under control. I think that would be a um, logical step to stop those big accidents. But it makes for a good spectacle, I know. I, I thought that he, like Dave said, he did everything. There was nothing wrong with with the pass. Yeah. Um, yeah. If he didn't go for it, then he's not a racer. Yeah. Um, and, the famous quote. You know, there was, yeah, <laughs> there was a there was a genuine passing opportunity there, and he took it, and yeah, locked up. 
uh, went a bit wide. Under the circumstances with the way, you know, we had so much rain in the lead up. So when you went off track, it was, it was just crazy slippery. And, um, and yeah, he copped a fair bit of a battering from everyone about the way he re-entered. I think the, probably one of the biggest problems was when he, just before he got to re-enter on the, on the track, he hit like a puddle of water and that put the car sideways and out of control. Um, so in some ways, I think, you know, he was probably, uh, I think maybe it was a bit harsh, some of the stuff that was yeah, aimed at him. Was. Yeah. Um, because he didn't mean to come back onto the track like that. Yeah. Um, he was completely out of control once he hit that, that puddle of water. And he was the first one, wasn't he? Like, so he yeah. would have been thinking, keep the momentum up. This is going to be yeah, and, and sure generally, the other side. Yeah. Generally, you would try and keep the momentum up so that you come back on, you've got some flow, um, and you don't, you know, you minimise your, your loss. Yeah. Um, but it was just that, that the conditions would, would, yeah, any other time probably wouldn't have been too bad. But um, sort of half reminded me when McLaughlin went off there and took out Tander, and yeah. that was for the lead of the race as well. So it was kind of similar sort of. It thing. was very similar, yeah. But back then, Wing Cup got done for it, remember that? That's right, yeah. <laughs> a bloke who had nothing really to do with it, he got pinged for it, yeah. which was just stupid. Yeah. Um, you're no longer the defending champion of Bathurst. Thanks oh. for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah why would you bring that up, Stubbsy? It was Stubbsy? massive though, wasn't it, for you? Yeah. You, got put, like, you were saying before about how exhausting it was. Was that yeah. part of it? Because you were everywhere. Yeah, yeah, we arrived on, well, we started driving up on the Monday, got there early Tuesday morning, and from the time we got there, it was flat out. You know, we had we had our livery launch, and then after that, it was just rolled into yeah. one thing after another. A Penrite preview? Pen, Penrite yeah, preview. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was really cool to see so many people there at the mountain so yeah. early in the week, by the way, and um, and for our livery launch up the top of the mountain. That was, was really cool. cool. That was but, actually really cool. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. But just the whole week, there was just... It was just non-stop media and um, that was great, but every day you're up at six in the morning, you go off to pit stop practice or whatever, yeah. and then it's just, there's, there was never really like half an hour where we could sit down and, and have a break. I no. think we even still struggled to get our, our, um, our debriefs in yeah, right. after, the, after each session because yeah. there was too much going on. And then at night you go to bed at, you know, 10, 10 o'clock and you wake up at six in the morning and do it all again. And um, by the end of the week, it just, it just hammers yeah. you. Like I've got you, to say, we loved it because yeah. the, you guys are always available. Like Penrite Racing, the team made you available. When we had the okay. film, obviously when we were waiting to find out what was going on with the shootout, yeah. you know, you guys were happy to chat and gave us a lot of time. So but it was great. It was, hard, like, it was appreciated at least from that but side. So, you know, we, we like looking back and saying that it's not like I would do anything different. Like it was good yeah. fun, all the media stuff. It was yeah. good fun, but um, by the we got boys are doing some work here behind us. Um, by the end of the week, uh, you know, you're running on adrenaline, and then come Monday, like I I got up again six o'clock in the morning, started driving home, got home at you know another thousand k on the road, and um, and just completely exhausted by the time we got home. I think the adrenaline wears off, and then you're just in no man's land. Dave, we can hear the team working hard here. Talk to us about your car, how, how bad the decision to repair it and not go to the spare, why and how and where's it at? Um, so yeah, obviously there was a fair bit of damage to my car um, and they took the, the line that, you know, if they don't repair it now, they're never going to. So they, you know, there's two weeks between the next race or two working weeks they've got in their hand. Um, so they stripped the car, put it in the fab shops, put on the jig, straighten all the bits, re-welded the parts they needed to weld in. There was some rear damage, some rear left damage and some front right damage. Um, so where, where Matt went into car, what, what, what car number are they? 10 or five? Five. Five, five, you're 10. Five. So, <laughs> so yeah, where he went into car um, five. five, he sort of clipped the wall as well and yeah. actually did a fair bit of damage on the, right, on the left rear. And um, so yeah, that had to be all re-welded. The front obviously had to be re-welded. Now, I've never seen a radiator that squashed that quickly. Like mm. there was a fair bit of damage, like concentrated in one area. Um, so yeah, the boys stripped it all down and they got it back from the paint shop on Friday. And yeah, they're just going to assemble all the parts what they can and yeah, get it all together for, ready for Gold Coast. So yeah, it's all looking good. It's all on schedule. All right, that's good. And there's a lot of damage though. Like, yeah, it's quite yeah. a bit of damage compared to, to previous 
damage that you've Never seen crashed. on cars. That <laughs> <laughs> that when you've been crashed into, <laughs> yeah. how did it, yeah. how did it, how did it compare? And, and yeah. how does the car feel when you get well, no, normally, right. normally when you crash, you sort of have like one concentrated area. You don't have two yeah. subsequent areas that you've got to fix. So it's kind of an un unusual sort of crash. Um, uh, sorry, what was the other part? Well, how does it feel when you get back in it? Like, do you well, expect it to be 100%? It's well, hard yeah, to know. That's, you know. The boys, are good. they're very, very good at their job. Yeah. Um, when I get back in it, I should, I should have no you know, qualms of going yeah. flat out and there's nothing going to fall off. Everything should be straight as per it come off the jig yeah. and they're just bolting on the bits that you know they already know how to bolt on it's not very it's not difficult you know they've done it heaps of times before so it just takes a lot of man hours to do yeah okay. talking to one of the boys before though Beal he's Beale. one of the most you know the more experienced guys and um he's saying it was the worst it's the worst he's ever seen really so, okay yeah you know, that he's ever been involved in anyway um yeah. so but they, they've done a fantastic job the car looks good as new Yep. And um, as Dave said, like it'll, it would have all measured up. They would have made sure all the measurement pickup points and everything are in the same spot. So yep. Dave shouldn't feel any different when he and, gets back in. And that's the biggest crash Matt Campbell's said he's ever had. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And he's like neck sore. His ribs are kind of yeah. busted up. And yeah. yeah. He was a bit worse for wear last week. And it costs money. Like yeah, through it no fault of your own to the team, yeah. that costs a lot of money. So there are a lot of criticism about the driving standards in general. People trying to be heroes in those first 10 laps yeah. where the conditions were quite challenging. Yeah. How, what was your take on it? And should we start with main game drivers? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's an, un, it's an unusual set of circumstance because it rained so much. There was so much mud around. The track was in terrible condition all week. Um, and, the, you know, we put these you know, we put this trust in these co-drivers that we don't have a warm-up anymore. There's no stand down 500 yep. um, to sort of get them up to speed. They would put them straight in the big race, start on the biggest grid we have, and we expect them to race hard in those like horrible conditions where it's still half wet, half dry. There was things going flying left, right and centre. It's hard for them to do. So, you know, I don't think we should have to start. I think that's, you know, a you know, it's it's up to each team or, you know, that is definitely going to be taken into consideration next year when, you know, the main driver will start because it's obviously man ma about managing risk yeah. and what they do is they always start the co-drivers. So that gives you more flexibility later in the race when it when it comes to take them out. You've got, yeah. a, you've got a more flexible um, chance to put your main driver in. Yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 it was a lot for that. It was a lot for the co-drivers to be asked to do. So I don't, it, I don't, I don't blame anyone doing it. It was just... Yeah. Yeah. A, it was circumstantial, I think. They haven't had a lot of dry running because it was all wet running. Yep. And, um, yeah, it was just, I don't know. What do you think, I, I think, the, like, well, on, the, on the driver parade, we could see that turn one exit was yeah. always going to be a problem. Yep. And my aim was just, I, I had it easy because I was off the front row. And you were row, the front so row. Just, <laughs> I, I, much, I, and you well, won the start. Yeah, How much easier did you want it? My big concern was that, that I wasn't going to get the start and that I was going to be hung out wide what, out yeah. of turn one and then I knew it, there was going to be I, I felt there was going to be carnage going up mountain straight yeah. because I, I, were, I went there to watch it for yeah. that very reason yeah. like someone's going to get pushed wide here into this mud and it's going to all happen yeah. right here so I deliberately went there for that and, reason. and I knew yeah. that you'd be a sitting duck being out on the right on the outside yeah. being in that water whilst the guys on the left were, in, were on a, 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 a clean line or a dry line um, so I sort of felt like there was going to be carnage um, I didn't expect what happened at later the chase yeah but um yeah I, I i don't know i think it was exceptional circumstances where that's pretty unusual and i think even if you throw the the main drivers in there probably would have been some of course you yeah, know okay. like it was wing cup i think that that was he, he was, was part of it he yeah. was part of yeah. it he's you know we all know how experienced <laughs> yeah. he is yeah Good so point. If, is he? if he can't <laughs> escape it then um yeah you know you put the other main drivers in and i don't think uh, I think you would have had the same result. Arguably, it could be worse. We've got bigger egos to feed. Exactly. <laughs> Sandown 500 then. You, you, I mean, you touched on it. That could have been a factor. It sounds like there's a big push for that to come back. It, Definitely. It sounds yeah. close. You'd be supportive of that? Always. You know, any, any Especially, especially me. <laughs> especially me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get yourself yeah, another. Yeah. ka -ching. <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah. you know, any time we do those endurance championship, it's always the best. You know, th when we did three rounds, it was the best three rounds of the year. Cause yeah. You know, you get to share it with someone and yep. it's more of a race and rather than just an individual sprint race, you know, you work as a team and 
there's heaps more positives to it. Top 10 shootout was Cannes, which was a yeah, disaster because we yeah. all love it. The viewers love watching the fans at the mountain. It's just one of the coolest moments. It's one of the best parts year, of the weekend. Um, fair call. And what do we do about our ties? Are no, they, not, not should fair we call. have been able to go out or not? Yeah, no, they should have. Definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave. I was, an <laughs> I was psyching him up, um, hey, wasn't I? The whole time, like, well, you ready, was, ready for this? But I was ready to because I. You hype yourself up all and, day, and yeah. like you, if you know that's coming up, your head is in that zone the whole day. You're thinking, what am I going to do? Yeah. How am I going to approach it? Where am I going to attack this circuit? Where do I need to, you know, um, take yeah. some caution? There was so much going through my head, and probably about an hour out from the shootout, I was just I didn't bother getting changed because I'm I like, th- I well, think you were with seven then, weren't you? Because yeah, I think I remember hearing I, you in my ear say, I no, think I, I don't think we should. There's no way like, I was yeah. saying at the time. And I was like, don't say that, Lee. Talk no. up. We've got to keep the viewers watching. Yeah, you know? I just thought, nah, no, you know, the, it, it looked like treacherous conditions. And yeah, I but thought, if you were 10th? If, if you were 10th, it would have been probably worse. <laughs> no, no, no. If you were 10th. Oh, I would have wanted it. You yeah, would have wanted it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but you were second. I had a lot more to lose than gain. So, but. In saying that, like I went when it, um, I think probably half an hour out from the start of the shootout, it looked yeah. like, yeah, okay, we could we could get this going. So I went and got changed, um, and I was starting to get excited, and then the second front rolled in, and it got washed out again. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I I really wanted to do it because it was my last shootout at yeah. Bathurst. Yeah. Um, so it was really disappointing, and I felt a little bit empty. And it, it felt like you didn't really, I don't know, you had, you hadn't done the full job yeah. to be on the front row. There is a duty and of care though for the sport as well, isn't there? Trying to yeah. play devil's advocate. They've got to, yeah. if someone binned it, you can imagine like the outroar. They did the right, they they did the right thing, them. in my opinion. I just think they did the right thing. It's just, you don't agree, it would have been nice, I, I reckon, what would have been good. And I think for the future, maybe they should look at if the weather's not looking great in the afternoon. Do it earlier. Pull it, pull it to earlier yeah. and, and shift the practice to that spot, yeah. you know? Yeah, true. Um, because everyone wants to see the shootout. And it's, it's such great an for integral sponsors, part commercial, of the, for your mate, teams. It's, it's so important. It's, it's the best shootout of the year. Yeah. It's yeah. unreal. It's and you spend, you spend, you spend the, the whole day thinking about it, about that it. one yeah. lap. Yeah. You get there yeah. at like 6 o'clock in the morning and yeah. you're not on track till bloody 5, yeah. 8, 5 yeah. p.m. So you've got like 11 hours with this one lap just constantly circling your head and how you're going to just the tension in yourself, as Lee said, just builds and builds and builds until you actually do the lap. It's, it was a massive, like, it's cool, massive like anti-climax. Yeah. So the tyres, are they up to scratch next year no. and the next gen? What are Apparently options? the next year's uh, wets are meant to be a hell of a lot better. Yes, yeah, so the next the next year wets, it's a much softer wet. Yeah. Um, it disperses the water. It's actually a proper wet, apparently. Yeah. And yeah, so they might be able to do, you know, those monsoonal conditions. But that was the, there was some epic scenes of like this, like waterfalls just gushing yeah. onto the track over yeah. the over the um, Armco and all the concrete walls and stuff. I've never seen a wetter and I've never seen a colder Bathurst yeah. in October. Hey, it was just bizarre. It was, it was pretty awesome. brutal. Um, wild cards, you like them at Bathurst? Yeah. Should there be more of them? Do we encourage it? What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I love wild cards. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Like yeah. Murph and Richie, that awesome. was a great story. That was so cool. Yeah. I loved seeing Murph come back. Yeah, yeah. same. And um, definitely, I thought he did an awesome job. And so did Richie, obviously. But um, to, to stick it in the shootout, um, those guys were, were yeah, they were a highlight of the weekend, yeah. I think. Um, but everyone loved seeing Murph come back. Yeah. And he was stoked that he beat his fastest lap around there. <laughs> <laughs> they made a big thing of it. So cool. was so yeah. Yeah. And the charters, he, I mean, they did an yeah. outstanding they did, actually. job I, as well to put that together. Like, I, I think if you can, you just need credible drivers in there. Um, you can't just throw anyone in there. Yeah. Um, no. Because our sport is dangerous at the best of times. You don't want to make it more dangerous by having people there. You know, we've seen in the past, there's been some pretty horrific crashes yeah. there from people not obeying the flags or whatever. And, and we all have respect for the safety of the sport. Um, and none of us want to be put in a position where, you know, you're running into someone up over the top because they're not doing the right thing. Yeah. Or... So yeah, it, with the right people in there, I think it's a great idea. Yep, and Lounsey and Declan, best to ever finish for a wild card too. So yeah. that was pretty cool too. Well, they finish. Eight. 
That's pretty good. Not bad, yeah. is it? Declan um, actually, Declan did a great job. And he so did. did Lounsey, we all expected that. Yeah. But, but Declan, Declan did stood on his own to feet. Yeah. Um, should we allow full-time drivers to pair up again? There's a little bit of chatter about this. It was leading on a lot of it from something that Will Davison said. He cleared that up and said he was taken a little bit out of context, but it's not going to happen, is it? Or should it happen? <coughs> oh, I don't. I don't. I don't want it to happen. I don't think it should happen. Yeah. But um, yeah, it sort of it sort of takes a lot of cars out of the running because you've got to pair up. Arguably, a, you know, a B team pairing of drivers. Yeah. So only half of the field. Yeah. yeah. So. I've been I've been part of no I actually haven't been part of both I've only been part of the generation that you have to have a um, yeah, yeah you have to have a proper co-driver so you might be able to speak more yeah I've, I've seen both sides and for me back in the day it was a great opportunity for me to jump in a car with Philip Skyfleet when I when I first started and um, you know that's that's two younger rookie. guys yeah, yeah. coming in and getting an opportunity to show their speed and their maturity or whatever and their skills um, which now doesn't happen yeah um, so yeah provided younger guys with a great opportunity I, I don't think that it should happen because it's um i've also and, and also i've teamed up with caruso and um who is my, my main series um, you know in the other car <laughs> yeah. teammate um and that was good fun but if you, it can really hurt a team's championship. Um, it can hurt a driver's championship. Yep. And if you've got two guys battling out in a team for the for the championship, it's a nil or draw, isn't it? Yeah. You, yeah, you don't. Point. There's no gain or no loss to, to each other. So you really the championship fight doesn't really work. Um, I, I think, like Dave said, to see more cars in the dice at the end because you've got all the main drivers in fighting for that um, that you know the the um, the trophy at the end of the race, I think that's better for the crowd. It also makes your co-driver choice more important these yeah. days. Yes. And who yeah. you're going to choose to, you know, care for your car and your championship and your team's championship. Mm. Um, this is supposed to be the, the preview for the Gold Coast, so we'll get to that in a second. But to it's a Garth really long and, interview, isn't it? It is. To Garth and SV, <laughs> there's a lot of talk about after Bathurst. For Garth and, and F SGV, SVG, SVG. Um, <laughs> that, you got to. Tip your hat, right, to Shane. I mean, yes, he's got good equipment, but he's now won more races in a season than any other driver in the history of the sport. Yeah, hey, he's, had a, he's had an unbelievable year. They've been in a class of their own. Um, I think he's played around a lot with most of us through the year where, you know, he, he knows he's untouchable and he's just having a bit of fun, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, he's, he's had an incredible year. And then, you know, we always knew he was going to be super strong at Bathurst. Um, and when they don't win, like what happened last year, they always bounce back so hard, triple eight. Um, they do it every time. And um, they're, they're an incredible outfit. Um, and yeah, Shane's done a good job. Garth was, Garth was strong all weekend. I think he got yeah. the fastest lap for the weekend in the co-driver set. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty good. But yeah, they, they, they did a very good job there. Gold Coast, we love it. I think it's one of the coolest races. How good is it to be back there? One of the best tracks we go to. <laughs> it's honestly the hardest mentally taxing track we go to. Because the walls are so narrow. You, and You don't get a rest and you have one small stuff up and you're in the fence hard. So you're constantly, you're constantly concentrating. The car's always moving around. The, the road surfaces are quite average. There's bumps, there's big curbs. Um, you know, the back chicane's quite fast. It's 160 k's through there. And the Yon two wheels flying through the whole thing. Uh, it's just a nuts track and I love it. Can't wait. It's been, it, been a few years since we've been there. Last time was 2019, so it's been a while, so I, mean, I can't wait. And there's the whole setting too, isn't there, Lee? Like, it's, it's just cool, you're on the strip, like everyone's yeah. into it, aren't it's they? so cool. I, and my memories of Gold Coast, the race, take me back to when I went there watching as a fan, watching the Indy cars yep. go round, and it was unreal. Eh? just unreal. the best. Um, I used to watch, love Nigel Mansell, yeah. and I'll be just taken back by how he'd come back with no riding on the side of the tyres. I'm like, oh, he's using the walls. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Scrape the fence. It's, it's just so cool. And the track is, it's, it's balls out. Like, yeah. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't leave an inch, um, but you can't take an inch too much either. So um, it's pretty rewarding when you get it right. Um, the car, how good does it feel? Like when you hit those curbs down the back chicane and it flies 
just perfectly yeah. and, and you come out of that corner and you're up on your lap, that's a pretty incredible feeling. And then you've got to finish it off with the rest of the track to put, the, put it all together. But um, yeah, just the atmosphere of the place. You know, you used to have all the women hanging <laughs> off the sides of the building and- The sights oh, no. and sounds. <laughs> you white pointers. It was the best. It was the, honestly the best race, wasn't it? It was cool. It was yeah. unreal. Your favorite memories, Dave? You've been involved in some cool moments My up there. My favorite memories? Um, oh, there's been a couple. When you win there, that's always good. I stole the- um, Armour all dude's hammer and smash Dean Canto in the nuts on the podium. <laughs> that was probably my favourite. Um, all right, we're going to lighten it up a little bit. We'll do a bit of word association looking ahead to the Gold Coast. Start with you, Dave. Surfboards. Waves. Lee. Sunshine. <laughs> Cavill Ave. <laughs> Drunken fools. <laughs> <laughs> Meter maids. Meter, Meter maids. maids. That's the next one. Oh. Silicon. <laughs> uh, big lips. <laughs> big lips. <laughs> Plastic surgery. Warwick Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> he was one, wasn't he? He was <laughs> one. Uh, sea World. Dolphins. <laughs> what? Sharks. <laughs> Curbs. Crashes. <laughs> uh, Carnage. I'll go back the other way now for a couple because you get first tips. Schoolies. Drunk. <laughs> 17 year olds. <laughs> Russell Ingle. Old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, old. <laughs> Jet skis. Um, oh, man. Oh, no. Waves. Waves <laughs> comes to my head first. Yeah, pretty much the same. And sunshine. Sunshine. Lollipops. <laughs> Tanned people. <laughs> Very good. Um, how do you prepare for the Gold Coast? You mentioned about it can be brutal. We've seen some massive stunts up there. I think Scotty McLaughlin, that was the last time we were there, I reckon, maybe, was it? When Scotty 2019. Was on, his, was on yep. his roof, was that? Yeah, it was a big crash, yeah. Um, because you've got to set up the cars differently, you've got to drive differently with the kerbs, don't you? Yeah, the, the track is, um, you, you set the car up, to take the curbs, basically. If you're not fast over the curbs, you're not fast at all. Um, so you, you sort of, it, you know, you, you set it up all around that and then you just drive the rest of the track for what it is, yep. you know, the balance. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll be taking the mirrors off before we get there, I think, <laughs> one, one side anyway. Either we'll, um, be, we'll take them off here or either we'll take we'll them take off. Them off. <laughs> either we'll take them off or the mechanics will. Um, so, yeah, we we'll, we, um, I don't know, you, you just, you got to prepare for the physical exertion. We're going to have the, the heat in the car yep. is pretty hard. Um, having we, have, concrete we haven't had a hot round for a while, have no, we? we haven't. It's been quite We've cold. We've got two hot ones oh, for no. the end of the year. Oh, yeah. Adelaide and will 250 be And 250 Ks. How yeah, are we going to do that? Ks. Yeah. That's like 80, how many laps is that? Laps. Oh, far out. <laughs> <laughs> So we hope sleeping. our drink bottle works and our <laughs> tool cool suit works. Yeah. Far out. And we hope so we don't long. knock the air duct off that gives us a little bit of air in the car. Um, how do you think you'll go? That'll be our final question, both of you. How do, how do you think you'll be up there? Yeah, I think we're going to go good. Like our strengths have been on the soft tyre and it's a yep. soft tyre round. Um, you know, street tracks are my favourite. Yep. You know, I love driving them. It seems to suit my style. Um, we've got good braking and turn cars. Um, yeah, and that's kind of need a, a big braking and turn car for there. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I just hope you know, 85 laps isn't too much for me. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't, sometimes they always make these like 250K races and they're just, they're like 50K is too long. Like they just, they can get the same result at 200Ks. They really can, can't yeah, they? Yeah, you're right, you're right. But I, I, I think... But they can't sell it as a 500. No. That's the problem. <laughs> but they don't understand, like, it's hard for us. Is it the GC 500? It's hard. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it is. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a big round. But um, I, I think... We got the potential to do very well with with our yeah like our setups the way that our cars work. I think it'll suit our cars a bit more than most rounds this year. Um, and I love street tracks too, so they're the best, hey. Yeah, they're, it's all about qualifying. You don't qualify well, yeah. it's so hard to pass. But also that track, if it's wet, 
man, oh, be mayhem. I forget and we've it. seen that a couple of times where I'd put the, the red flag red. up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um, so hopefully it doesn't rain, and if it does, I hope it's just a little shower. Okay. Well, we're going to get Couchy on the Couchy to give us a bit more couchy of an update the about the about the car. But boys, thanks for your time and, and good luck up there. Cheers, no thanks, Dubsy. Thank you. Well, Couchy, give us a bit of a snapshot on where things are at, the decision to repair and just how bad it was. Yeah, so look, we're, we're not in a too bad a shape. Um, after Bathurst, when we got the car here, stripped it down, um, had a look at the chassis. The chassis wasn't as bad as we were expecting. Um, right hand, front rail, both um, rear rails. So we decided to, to press on and, and repair that car. So we had that back on the jig on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and the guys have done a great job. It was in paint Friday morning, so it's back in the factory now, um, and we're charging ahead, just uh, getting all the bolt-on bits. That's a lot. That's where a lot of the work and effort goes. A lot of the time is is getting those spares replaced and um, back onto the car. But yeah, look, we're not in we're not in bad shape. Okay. Financially, the repair bill. Do you have an estimate yet of what it would be? Yeah, so when I say we're not in bad shape, I wasn't talking about our, our <laughs> bank account. So look, it's, it's been quite an expensive uh, incident. So look, I think, I think we're talking in the range of 100, 150,000 plus to, um, to, to get everything back to uh, race ready. But look, that's, that's motor racing. That's uh, unfortunately when you go racing, sometimes you crash. The damage even impacted the engine, I understand. Can you tell us about the front end damage? Yeah, so the, the impact took, like, was pretty much right down the centre of the car. So it meant like the, radio, the crash beam and the radiator, it, it absorbed a lot of the energy. The radiator got fairly heavily wrapped around the engine. I've never seen one myself that, that badly wrapped around an engine. So the front of the engine, the water pump, alternator, all, those, um, all the water system around that, all those systems were, were quite badly damaged. So that's gone back. They've all been replaced. It'll be get on the dyno uh, hopefully tonight. Uh, and then it should be good to go for Gold Coast. And the car should be back to effectively 100%. That's the, that's the job of the team, yeah? Yeah, that's what these guys do uh, really well. So they'll have, it, they'll have it firing on all cylinders uh, and we'll be back in action at the Gold Coast. And in terms of setup for the Gold Coast, riding the kerbs, it's a very different approach, isn't it, to, to Bathurst? Oh, 100%. Gold Coast is probably one of the most unique circuits that we go to. It's really all about getting over those kerbs um, as, as quickly as, as possible. So the setup wise is, is completely different to, to Bathurst. So the engineers are working away on, on uh, that. We haven't been there since 2019. So um, yeah, so there's, and the, the cars changed a lot since then. The last time this team was, was there was a Nissan. So uh, that's, how, that's how different it was. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Should be a really good challenge. All the best. Cheers, thank you.